sit down. Not at all. No, so we're, <laughs> we've just had a, a good discussion of a, a midterm planning review, uh, issues that are on the plate for the lame duck session as well as uh, the coming year. And just happy to have you join us, Mr. President. Well, listen, I'm happy to do that and grateful to all of you for taking the time to be here and participate in this. Uh, you know, you and the Patriots in other lines of business and small independent business in this country are responsible for nine out of ten of the new jobs, almost nine out of ten of the new jobs that are created. And uh, I don't know that America could be in better hands. And I think that it's you and again your compatriots who have made us the envy of the world in that regard. And I. Uh, I don't know whether anyone has discussed already. And I have been saying wherever I couldn't as many times as I could about talking about the progress that we've made. The tax is down 15% now, it will be 25% uh, July 1st. Uh, growth in spending at the federal level from 17% a year down to 6%. Now, inflation that was 12.4, and the day before yesterday I was saying it was down to 5.1 for 1982, but now, as of yesterday, I can say it's down to 4.8 uh, because of the drop in the September rate. Interest rates, as a result, are falling. And I know that even though the prime has stayed with you know, some of 11 and a half, and a couple of savings and loans have come down to 11 and three quarters, basically it's 12. But uh, also, again, as we had in, uh, earlier, around the country, there are some financial institutions that are voluntarily putting up fixed sums of money uh, for mortgage rates at lower rates of interest than the market to stimulate the, uh, the building. And uh, having practiced that on you before I go back out on the trail again tomorrow. <laughs> 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 I, uh, now I'd rather hear from all of you. Mr. President. Mr. President, every woman in America knows your position on the Equal Rights Amendment. Your belief that women's rights can be fully protected by enforcing existing laws and your promise to modify them where they are shown to be unfair to women. Mr. President, an extraordinary opportunity does now exist to make good on your campaign pledge because such a law exists which is clearly discriminatory to women. The exclusion of women as a group from the Small Business Administration's 8A Business Development Program. With a stroke of your pen, you can make good on your campaign promise, and you can open the American economy to a virtually untapped resource, the creativity and entrepreneurship of women-owned businesses. If you add women to the SBA's 8A program, you would be encouraging their entry into the free enterprise system in a concrete way creating more jobs for others, and joining the national effort in economic growth. Women would go from dependent on government resources to contributors for government resources. Well, you have said something that has caught me by surprise on that, other than that we have ordered uh, and have in process a program of finding all those areas of government where there can be discrimination or is discrimination now due to the regulations or laws or whatever. And uh, I know that Elizabeth has been working, we have put together a working group here in the government on that and have secured the cooperation of all 50 governors who appointed contacts from uh, representing them for following through at the state level also. And we looked into this. Yes, and Mr. Herrera is here this morning. We'd be happy to, to visit with you about that as well, the mm -hmm. Small Business Administration. Of course, there are a number of programs that uh, are helpful to women throughout the government, so we'd be happy to follow up with you on that. See, I almost thought that, that the 14th Amendment did the job that the NRA was supposed to do because it actually uses the word persons. But <laughs> there should be no discrimination against any persons. Mr. President, um, I'd like to make a couple of uh, positive suggestions. Um, one is a fairly short term and addresses the area of capital formation and, 
investment, which we've been talking with Dr. Hawk and Dr. Felsen about. There is a pending uh, ruling on a Treasury regulation uh, called 385, which uh, uh, goes to the, the heart of trying to uh, define, or redefine debt and equity for tax purposes. This is something that um, I think when you have a chance to check into it, and Vice President Bush has been most helpful, by the way, in this area, um, that it's a, it's a completely downside and no upside kind of ruling. Essentially, what, it will ha what will happen, and it's currently scheduled to go into effect next April, but with the uh, change over in Congress and so forth, it may be even difficult getting hearings before this. This ruling would so uh, muddle the picture of debt and equity that it would virtually eliminate a lot of the venture capital uh, that is currently extant in the country in terms of doing deals and interfere with the relationship of, a, of an owner of a small business and his business relative to lending money. Uh, in short, in most cases, when the company pays the loan back, it would be considered a dividend, for example, to the individual. It's quite a pernicious thing. We've talked to Treasury uh, many times, and different groups have talked to them, with very limited success, and they seem to be kind of moving ahead. And I'd just like to highlight your attention on this. It's called Treasury Regulation 385. And I think when you look into it, you'll see that there's very little to recommend it. The second thing, of a longer term nature, and I'm happy uh, to hear from Mrs. Dole that you're going to have a later session on international trade. I'd like to suggest that uh, you form some form of a uh, President's Small Business Task Force to help form international trade policy. Uh, in the past three years, and even currently, for the first time, small business uh, representatives have been on the Industry Sector Advisory Committees under uh, Ambassador Brock and, 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 and the Commerce Department. But we, frankly, it's, it takes a while, it took me a couple of years just to learn the language and so forth, uh, because you're dealing, and, and I'm on the aerospace committee, and the nearest company to me is E-Systems, which is three or four hundred million dollars, and then you go up to Boeing's and so forth. I think in particular, a small business task force, if people in the small business sector are familiar with international trade, the peculiar problems of small business getting into trade would be the most uh, useful and productive committee for you to form our task force. But we have, we've been very interested in that and have been uh, taking some actions to try and open up export trade to do small business. I've just noted this one down here and we will look into both of these. George, you know, is the reason that George is heading up our task force on uh, regulations and eliminating useless and ridiculous regulations. Thanks. Mr. President, um, I know that you're going to have to leave us in a couple of minutes, but we do have a presentation which the realtors would like to make to you at this time. If we could uh, move forward, please, with the presentation. <laughs> 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 we, have to, we have to slip something in here on the table. <laughs> <laughs> individuals who are interested in buying homes. And I think of equal or even greater importance is the fact that not only is activity picked up on the part of those individuals interested in buying homes, but in fact they're buying new homes. Our surveys indicate that uh, during the month of October so far, more than 150,000 families at an annualized rate have been able to buy homes as opposed to those who were able to buy homes in the month of September. Now this is uh, brought about a number of things, and I think uh, probably of very great importance is the fact that it has created as many as 150 or perhaps 200,000 new and continuing jobs.
jobs uh, in the area of individuals who are preparing these homes uh, for sale or individuals who are carpeting or redecorating these homes after the sale is made as well as those individuals who are involved in the in the service of performing the sale as well. This of course has been brought about in, in our opinion because of your leadership in reducing deficit spending and uh, encouraging a, a more appropriate growth in the money supply. And uh, I think that you should be aware, sir, that uh, this of course has resulted in uh, reduced interest rates as well. Uh, Long-term rates are down uh, by three percentage points from the level that they were at earlier this year. That three percentage points equates to a reduction in the average house payment of $150 on the average home that's been sold so far in the month of October. And that means that as many as four million families who prior to this time had been locked out of the opportunities of home ownership are now able to afford homes as a result of these reduced interest rates. Mr. President, uh, on behalf of America's homeowners and uh, uh, all of uh, the people who are interested in seeing uh, the programs that you have uh, help this nation enjoy a recovery, we, uh, we'd like to present to you a resolution on behalf of the Board of Directors of the National Association of Realtors, representing 600,000 members from every state and community. We thank you for, for providing leadership to bring interest rates down and allowing more families to satisfy their housing needs. We urge you to continue this leadership so that mortgage interest rates can return to normal and keep the American dream of homeownership alive and well in America. And we present this to you to indicate that, sir. Thank you very much. figures that you just gave, because I know what they mean. They mean that millions of more people are now, due to that reduction in the added monthly payment, uh, are going to be able to afford them. And this does mean, as you pointed out already, even more jobs to come. And I'm grateful to all of you for this. I, uh, I can't help but recall another procrastinate that you mentioned here. <laughs> Back in my previous career, there was a prominent writer in Hollywood whose little girl wanted a dollhouse for Christmas. But she wanted a real dollhouse. She kept emphasizing a real dollhouse. So her father went to that department in the studio that makes the miniatures for some of the shots and had those craftsmen make this truly marvelous house for her. And on Christmas morning, she broke into tears said she wanted a real dollhouse. And her father couldn't understand and he said, well, what? I'm real. She said, no swimming pool. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's no swimming pool. <laughs> <laughs> Lights, please. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. Thank you for your the four or five things that I mentioned are such that there is, there is some sunshine on the horizon. Because your industry, almost by itself, can, if not eliminate, make a drastic reduction in a recession because of the very associated things that you mentioned, the appliances and all the other things that are in recession because of what the interest rates have done to house. So you probably haven't heard the expression before, but I can assure you we're going to stay the course. <laughs> 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 that refers to the other end of the Lights, please. Thank you.